Hi everyone, welcome to Kate Knit Slowly and welcome to Knitting Math 101. In this video, we're going to go over a few strategies for what to do when you're knitting off gauge, such as how to pick your size and how to make simple modifications to a pattern. I end up filling a lot of these little notebooks with simple calculations in order to gain confidence in my knitting and the finished products, and I would like to help you do the same. So this video is going to be divided into three sections. We're going to talk about how to swatch, and I've got a few examples here. Then we'll talk stitch gauge followed by row gauge. I'd recommend following the sections in order, but there are also chapters down below if you'd like to skip ahead. So grab a beverage of your choice and let's get into the math. Let's start by talking about swatches. And you can see I've got a few examples here. On all of these, these were for three different projects I've worked on, and I followed the same strategy to swatch. And then in the cases where I was off gauge, that's when I followed the math that I'm going to go through in this video. So the strategy to swatch is to cast on the number of stitches that your pattern is telling you the stitch gauge should be. So my example here, um, I've got what you can see is definitely a real knitting pattern. And it is telling me that the gauge for this pattern should be 22 stitches equals 10 centimeters. By the way, this entire video is going to be in centimeters. Don't fight me, I'm Canadian. <laughs> but um, for my American friends, I'd recommend trying to do this in centimeters just because you'll find that we're dividing by 10 and multiplying by 10 which just makes things a little bit easier. Although you could absolutely do this math in inches as well. So 22 stitches for this example. And again, all three of these used the same strategy, but we're actually gonna use this guy here as the example for today. This is a swatch for my lotter cardigan. Don't worry, we're not going to show anything from the actual pattern today. Um, as you can see, we're using what is definitely a real pattern. So this was the one where I cast on, I believe, 22 stitches and then just a few extras on either side to get a garter border so that it lays nice and flat. Then first few rows are just knit to again get that garter border. And what that means is that um, in a perfect world, this should be 10 centimeters exactly across. The other thing I did is that I knit inside the garter frame here for the exact number of rows specified by our row gauge. So uh, in this case, for our example, 28 rows. So what that means is that inside this frame, if everything went to plan, we should have a 10 by 10 square. So I can see here really more like nine and a half. And for the row gauge, we're looking at about nine. So this is off gauge. And then the question becomes, well, do I want to re-swatch? In this case, I didn't want to re-swatch because I really like this fabric. I want this fabric to be the final cardigan. The other thing to consider here, which is a big caveat, is that this is an example where I'm using a heavy DK weight and the pattern is really like a worsted slash Aran weight. So it's not a huge jump from one to the other. I would not use this if I was going like fingering weight to worsted or something. Um, in that case, I would really start to worry about like the details of the pattern and the shaping. Okay, let's get into the math. And this is the point where you can start following along if you have your own swatch and your own pattern. So getting started here, we have four values that we're going to be working with. Expected gauge, expected width, actual gauge and actual width. So starting from the beginning, expected gauge is our pattern gauge. That is 22 stitches. I'm gonna write ST for stitches. Expected width is 10 centimeters. Now actual gauge is the thing that we don't know. That is our only unknown here. So we're gonna call that X. And then actual width is when we measured the swatch across and we talked about the strategy of casting on the exact number of stitches that the gauge should be. So my actual width was, if I'm being really specific, 9.4 centimeters. 
So those are my four values. And now we have to solve for x. Now, the way that I think of this is that I know that I had 22 stitches when I cast this on, and that 22 stitches was equal to 9.4 centimeters. Now, I did write that a little bit funny for good reason, because we need to add in our unknown, and I do like for the x to be on top of something. So what we don't know is that if 22 stitches is 9.4 centimeters, how many stitches would be in 10 centimeters? Like if we had knit this a little bit wider, how many stitches would that have been? I can eyeball it and say like probably one or two more, um, but if we want to be precise, which we do in this case, then what we're looking at here is how many stitches are in 10 centimeters if there are 22 stitches in 9.4 centimeters. From there, we can just solve for x. So all we have to do for this, and the reason that I kept x on top, is that we can take the 22, multiply it by the 10. 10 by 22 over 9.4 is equal to 23.4. And that is my gauge. And again, sanity check, that makes a lot of sense because I was just saying that I think that if I had one or two more stitches here, it would have been 10 centimeters. And it does look like I'm about one and a half stitches off the actual gauge. And again, I was saying earlier that this isn't a strategy I would use if I was going like fingering to DK weight or like making a big jump like that. This to me is a relatively small jump and that makes me comfortable with doing the modifications we're about to do. One more step that we're gonna take with this number, I am going to divide it by 10. So I'm writing or 2.34 and that value is stitches per centimeter. So at this stage, I want to think about in my case, this is going to be a cardigan, but if you're doing a sweater, same thing. How big do you want your sweater to be? For me, I like to do this in a range. It just gives me more options. So I'm writing goal, and these are just numbers that I know from experience and also from measuring sweaters that I already own. But I'm looking for a sweater here that's about 105 to 120 centimeters. Anything in that range, I will be very happy with. So for this math, I'm going to write, therefore, minimum number of stitches, so that's that 105 number for me, is equal to 105 times 2.34. And that equals 246 stitches. So minimum number of stitches I want is 246. Now, same thing for the maximum. So basically here, I've done the same math for my minimum number in the range and the maximum number in the range. All I had to do was multiply it by my magic number, stitches per centimeters, and that gives me a stitch count that I'm looking for. So I'm looking for a size in this pattern that's somewhere between like 250 and 280. So this is where I look at my pattern and I want to find the part of the pattern, not just at the top, but the part of the pattern where you join in the round under the arms and it has the maximum number of stitches around the chest. So I'm looking down here, scrolling all the way down to the body section, join in the round, you should now have this many stitches. And I am looking for sizes here that fall in this range. And I actually have a few options, anything from there to there falls in my range. So I will probably take the middle one. I'm going to do one more step, and that is to take the stitch count, 270, divide it by my magic number, 
and that gives me a value of 115 centimeters, which is actually perfect. That is exactly what I want for my sweater. Okay, now let's turn the page and we can talk about row gauge. So you can see I've got really the same four variables set up here, but for row gauge. So we can go ahead and fill those in the same way. Expected row gauge from our pattern was 28 rows. Expected length, once again, was 10 centimeters. When I measured the actual length of my swatch, it looked like nine centimeters. And then once again, our actual gauge is unknown, so that can be X. So exactly like with the stitch gauge, we need to solve for X to find our actual gauge. So I'm just plugging X into really the same formula and saying, how many rows would I have if I had done 10 centimeters? And then solving for X, I get 31 rows. Exactly like with the stitch gauge, we can divide by 10 to get a magic number, which is 3.1 rows per centimeters. And another step that I've taken here is to calculate the exact same magic number, but for the pattern. So that gives me a magic number for the pattern that we can compare and use as well. So, What's important here is that with the row gauge, it's not so important with choosing a size, but if I get to something like the yoke and maybe there's a v-neck with decreases over a certain number of rows, that's when I would start to worry about it. The example I'm gonna do here, same thing but with the sleeves. My pattern here is telling me to decrease every eighth row five times. And then it's helpfully telling me that this section should be about 14 centimeters long. I suspect that mine wouldn't be 14 centimeters long. If I did this, this would be 40 rows. So that's the first piece of information that we need here. Eight times five is equal to 40 rows. So the pattern's telling me to do 40 rows. And I can even fact check that 14 centimeters there since it is telling me approximately. So if I do my 40 rows divided by the magic number of the pattern, 2.8, I get 14.2 centimeters. So the pattern is hoping that this decrease section happens over 14.2 centimeters. What I can do is take that 14.2 centimeters and multiply it by my magic number of 3.1, and that gives me 44 rows. So that number is how many rows I want to do instead of the 40. However, this is the difference from the uh, previous uh, math that we did with the stitch gauge. We might have to do some rounding here because we can't really evenly um, divide 44 by five, which is what we want to do to figure out how many rows we need to do before a decrease if we're gonna decrease five times over 44 rows. So if we do that division, we'll have to round either up or down. And what I end up with is doing every nine rows five times. So you can see that's actually 45 rows that I would be doing. Now, because I did some rounding here, I am going to do one extra step, and that is to check my work. So to check my work, I'm basically going to say, if I knit for 45 rows, at my gauge, what would that length be? Because I know over here that if I knit for 31 rows, it'll be 10 centimeters, but how many centimeters will it be if I knit for 45? So solving for X, that gives me 14.5 centimeters, which is very close to the original intent of the pattern, which was 14.2. 
But just to be sure, I can do the same math saying, well, if I had knit for 40 rows, which is what the pattern originally wanted me to do, but of course I've still got my real gauge, that would be 12.9 centimeters. So it is closer to the original intent of the pattern if we use our um, magic number and our math. So that's everything I wanted to show you today. Thank you very much for joining me for this Knitting Math 101 class. If you have any other questions about knitting math, please leave a comment. Um, I would be happy to turn this into a series. I really enjoy making these videos. And do subscribe if you feel so inclined.